Hey there, everybody. Pete Bardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another concert review. And in the co-captain's chair today, from in the proxy, Mr. Eric Porter. What's going on, my friend? How you doing, Pete? Doing good. I can't, I can't really say long time no see because we That's just true. went to a show last night. So uh, just it seemed like a few short hours ago, Eric and I ventured to uh, where Eric lives, uh, Saratoga Performing Arts Center, to see, I don't know if they're calling this tour anything but it's uh Arya it Spoon. was um live and unzoomed live and unzoomed live right. and unzoomed ario speedwagon sticks and lover boy so three bands that uh are no strangers to classic rock audiences of these bands have toured together mm -hmm. before uh in this configuration and i'm sure other configurations and uh it, it this it was a summertime tour cycle uh event that uh you know seems to be very very popular here in the states in recent years so usually you can see some sort of a a bill like this and uh yeah eric and i talked about it not long a couple months ago and i'm a huge sticks fan i've seen loverboy and reo many times each before and i like them too uh but i'm more of a sticks fan and uh we were just like all right let's let's just go so we got lawn tickets um and the forecast called for possible rain. And I think we got more than possible. And we were sitting there under umbrellas in our little chairs for a good chunk of the, uh, a good chunk of the show. Um, I, I think it was sticks that. mostly, right, Pete? Sticks mostly sticks. Of the rain? Yeah, I think Loverboy, I, I think we just got a couple of sprinkles, but it was most of sticks set and a good chunk of uh, Ario set as well. Uh, just kind of just this constant rain on and off and, yeah, what are you going to do, right? Uh, and it was, uh, thankfully, it didn't really get that cool last night. No. So geez. I think that was in our favor. The temperature stayed pretty static. But one of the, before, like, we went last night, we were, like, kind of talking back and forth about, you know, how many people you think are going to show up for this? It's a Wednesday night, you know, middle of the summer, uh, you know, COVID still somewhat of a concern. So I think we were both like, yeah, you know, 5,000 would probably be a pretty good, prediction of how many people might show up for something like this and man it was way more than that <laughs> way more than that i mean we we got there what time like six o'clock six fifteen yeah we were there because we were trying to get there a little bit before i think it was uh 6 45 was uh what they had listed for lover boy so i know we tried to get there i'm right around the corner pretty much from the venue so um we left a little early or what we thought was a little early and we even hit traffic right there so we figured okay a little busier maybe than we expected and uh it they they drew a crowd boy they really did yeah. there were people all over the place uh, the lawn was pretty much full i think the pavilion was if not a sellout pretty close to it but i was amazed at how many people were sitting like way back by like all the concession stands and all these other like open areas i mean there were wall-to-wall -wall people Definitely. and i was like holy cow it's like i it reminded me because again i go more to bethel woods because that's kind of in my backyard uh but i always compare the two venues and this reminded me of like one of those jam-packed bethel shows where it's just like everywhere you go it's just wall-to-wall -wall people so i was pleasantly surprised at how well this drew and uh you know every, you know you looked around and there's people our age and older although i did see a lot of younger folks We've and been. unlike our prog shows there were a lot of ladies there last night a lot of ladies yeah. yes yeah we had, I, I think i would easily say it was 50 percent male versus female maybe even more female than male last night great but again look at the bands we're talking about so lover yeah. boy let, let's start first so lover sure. boy came on first at seven o'clock they played what about 45 minutes i think yeah they now? actually had a pretty good set i thought in terms of time they gave them a good run for um you know normal and especially with a three act show sometimes you figure it's 25 minutes half hour and they're gone so i think yeah. they got about a 45 i've got um nine songs and i think people who knew them i mean we're of that age they were on mtv constantly uh when we were in high school uh so they opened up with notorious um lucky ones and queen of the broken hearts were the first three which i wasn't as familiar with those i don't think i think notorious but the other two were kind of and then they plowed right into the hits with um Kid is Hot Tonight, Loving Every Minute of It, Hot Girls in Love, Turn Me Loose got the crowd going for them. Oh, yeah. That that was kind of the turning point. And then, of course, working for the weekend. Yeah. 
yeah we kept we kept laughing we kept looking around this and they were like all the ladies were dancing oh, yeah. I mean, everybody was having a blast and i think you know lover boy appeals to that kind of party kind of 80s crowd right i think you know everybody like you said everybody knew lover boy they were all over the radio they were all over mtv and you know the guys look a bit older sure. uh, reno's definitely Heavier oh, than he used to be, right? Exactly. But he has a blast up there. You know, he still has the same attitude. He's just still got the damn headband. And it's just, it's it's really funny. But he, he sounded pretty good, you know. There I was thought he sounded songs. good, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, some songs, it was like he was reaching a little bit. But, uh, you know, Paul Dean still can crank out the riffs and the and the licks and stuff. So I thought uh, I, I thought they were fun, as they generally are. You know, it's like you either love Lover Boy or you don't. And they've never been a go-to band for me but i always can listen to their music and, and it brings me back and then i'm like ah, you know it's okay i, I know all the songs you yeah. kind of like all the songs i you know not a band i would go out and buy all their albums i think i have a greatest hits but uh they're always fun live and they were and i think like you said in that environment all three bands really kind of meshed well together the crowd i mean i don't think there was anyone in the crowd that's turning their back saying well i'll come back in for uh sticks or ario i mean right from the start everyone was there into it and like you said people we were looking around us people were dancing um and that continued most of the night so yeah it did and yeah after love boy we went to go hit the men's room and we were talking it's like well we were fully anticipating that reo was going to be up next and we're like making our way back and all of a sudden we hear you know the fight of our lives from the new uh sticks album crash of the crown and we're like holy shit sticks is going on second and uh, they played a lengthy set, packed. This is what I really liked about it. With all the, the, the hits, the staples that you'd expect, but they played a, a good couple of songs, a handful of songs from the latest album, Crash of the Crown, which for me is what I wanted. So Fight of Our Lives started things off and then they, they didn't waste any time. They went right into Blue Collar Man and then right into Grand Illusion, then right into Lady. So right there, you got three staples in a row. Then the title track to Crash of the Crown, which was great. Then back to Light Up, all right? And then you got Tommy out there with um, acoustic guitar doing Sound the Alarm, which I thought was great. Tommy Shaw is just like a freak of nature, man. He just still sounds so good, still yeah. energetic up there on stage. And uh, yeah, I just the guy impresses me every time I see them. They, they, I mean, we talked about it after, and obviously we'll get to Ariel, but I think that was one of the things we discussed. I mean, very energetic, uh, Larry Gowan or Lawrence Gowan, incredible. I mean, I, I said that to you. I said, you you could not have picked a better guy to replace Dennis D. Young in terms of the live show. And I know you're more, I'm not really familiar with the stuff they've done with him studio wise, but I got to tell you, I mean, to me, they were the, they were the act of the night by far. And oh, that's yeah. not to diminish what anybody else did because it was a fun night, but they yeah. killed it up there. I thought they were. Favorite. Well, yeah, it wasn't even close. And, and again, like you said, that's no disrespect to Aria or Loverboy, but Sticks were the highlight of the evening by far. And that's and again, I'm a big fan. I'm not I'm not I'm trying not to be biased here, but you could see based on the crowd reaction and everybody just getting into every song that it wasn't just us. It no. wasn't just us because there was a little lull in the action during a, a chunk of Ario set, which I thought was was really good. Yep. But you could see that a good chunk of the people seemed to really be there for sticks. Uh, and it kept on going from there. They played Rock in the Paradise from Paradise Theater, which was really good. Uh, Fooling Yourself from Grand Illusion, which was excellent. Uh, then Lawrence did a little kind of piano thing, Criminal Mind, uh, that moved into Too Much Time on My Hands. Again, back from the Paradise Theater album. Then you had uh, Kedive and Lost at Sea from uh, Crash of the Crowns. And then, of course, Come Sail Away to finish off the regular part of the set. And then the encore, which we were a little bit surprised. They, but I think I'm pretty sure they played it the last time I saw them. Uh, Mr. Roboto from Kilroy was here. And as much shit as that album has taken over the years, that song still, I think, resonates with crowds and people were totally into it. It and worked that, live. It really did. Yeah, it does work live, right? And then, of course, Renegade was the last song. And that was, to me, that has become the true final encore song for Styx, even above Come Sail Away. Because I've seen them before where they played Come Sail Away last. And that's probably, next to Babe, their most recognizable song. But to me, I think Renegade really is the showstopper. 
it's it's heavy it's fiery everybody knows all the lyrics and it, it's it gives the audience a little you know singing time and uh, i i just thought it was great and they went down a storm and people i think wanted more and hopefully i wasn't bothering you with my air drumming but i know i got going to that one with uh, i was doing it too i, I was doing that <laughs> the whole set yeah i was singing I, I could barely talk after they were done but uh, but you know because they didn't headline i guess we didn't get a couple of songs from them uh most notably we didn't get um Sweet Madam Blue mm -hmm. from Equinox. We didn't get Crystal Ball, title track from that album. Um, that's probably it. I mean, you know, they don't play Babe anymore. So I think that's probably the only two songs that I think they would have snuck in. Uh, you know, had they were not, they're, I mean, they're still kind of pushing the last album, right? So, yep. you know, you take out one or two of those tracks, you throw those two in, then it becomes a, a best of evening once again. So, um, but yeah, all in all, great. I think they all sounded good uh todd superman on drums terrific yeah. you know jy terrific they brought chuck pinozo out for two songs like they normally do you got i'm drawing a blank on his name but the new guy who is their yeah. co-writer and producer now I, I totally forget his name but um he's up there on on third guitar you know throughout the whole set now so uh, yeah all told great everybody sounded good they played their asses off great set no complaints highlight of the night so then we get REO Speedwagon. So uh, headline in the show. And again, we got uh, Kevin Cronin, who's he, he at least a couple of times he kept talking about how old he is. And I was he like, turned oh. 70, I think, right? He yeah. turned 70. He's got, he's got the short haircut and the weird green glasses. And he looks, you know, looks like, uh, you know, yeah. he's looking at his age and he doesn't care. But he, he was pretty energetic the whole show. And, you know, a lot of people shit on, you know, his singing ability in recent years and i would say for the most part he was pretty good uh yep. there were some of the older tracks where i think he was struggling to hit the high notes but he just seemed to give it his all and i thought he did a pretty good job because i've seen them before in you know more recent years i think i last saw them like maybe eight or nine years ago and he didn't sound very good that night i thought he sounded better last night than he did back then but uh they played a lot of what you'd expect, yeah. all the hits and some really strong, I don't know, want to call them deep cuts, but like of the more of the important songs from the early part of their catalog. And it's funny because for me, some of my favorite moments of the night were those early, early hard rock songs that from the first handful of albums, which you could tell most of the people in the audience had no idea, right? Because they played Riding the Storm out. They played Back on the Road again, which is yeah. my, my favorite song of the whole night. That's an early song. And I got the impression half the people or more had no idea what those songs were. But Don't Let Them Go, Take It on the Run. Everybody's into that. Uh, they played Keep Pushing, another great older song. That was excellent. Uh, Live Every Moment, That Ain't Love. Not as familiar with those songs. I'm sure I've heard them many times. But uh, Tough Guys, also from High Infidelity. Can't Fight This Feeling was the big 80s, mid 80s power ballad. Well, everybody seems to be into that. Uh, like You Do, another really good kind of funky hard rocker from the early part of the career. Then Time For Me To Fly, which has been a FM radio staple for many, many years. And then Back On The Road Again, which was really rocking, riding the storm out. And then, of course, Keep On Loving You and then Roll With The Changes to finish it all off. So for me, 13 songs, really good set. The band was kicking. Uh, their current guitar player, really good. You know, I halfway through this set you know you mentioned to me that uh kind of miss gary richrath but um i think this guy is really really good as well and i think he does his best to kind of do you know hone in on gary's kind of tone and licks and whatnot but you know be himself he did he had the less paul i think if not all night most of the night yeah so he was you know he he's obviously staying in that lane in terms of uh, the only thing i had mentioned to you too was I didn't remember seeing amps on stage. So I was wondering if he was right. using a fractal or one of those. Had to um, but yeah, he sounded, yeah. Uh, his tone was good. It's just Rich Rath always for, you know, um, cause you're same age as I am. So I remember those early videos and I wasn't the biggest Ario fan, but I didn't dislike them. And I always liked his playing. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, he stayed true to everything. And, you know, he even got the, uh, pick going down the Rich Rath slides. He did those, so I'm like, yeah, he's he's got it. Yeah, and this, and we're talking about Dave Amato, uh, the Dave Amato. So, right. and he's God, he's been in the band now since '89. 
was gonna say he's been there he was there longer than rich rath ever yeah was. basically yeah but uh you know neil dowdy still on keyboards in fact he's the only original original member kevin crone and bruce hall who's been in the band since 77 on bass uh, and then Brian uh, hits on drums, and he's also been in the band since '89. So this lineup has been together now for a, you know over 30 years. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't complain about this set. I just, for me, a- after we were walking out of there, I was like, you know, all three bands are really, really good, but man, Sticks kind of stole the thunder from you know of the night, in my opinion. I would agree. Yeah. Um, but it was a blast. I mean, any like you said. If, if you liked one of those bands, all three of them worked that night. I mean, I they all had their little, whatever it was, if it was one or two songs that the crowd got into, because we were kind of scouring the crowd as we were sitting there. And I know we had a group behind us that was, we were all dancing the lover boy. And, but yeah, I mean, the crowd was into the whole show. So, which is great. You know, you usually go and you're like, eh, opener or whatever. And I know, I think Sticks and Ario have done quite a few together right they have yeah they have over the years so it's a great pairing i mean they really work well together i think and we had in front of us we had a a mom who was probably about our age there with her two uh sons i'm assuming that was her sons i think and so they were probably in their 20s and <laughs> they didn't care about the rain they were just like it's raining who cares take off the shirts and they were up dancing singing having a great time getting her into it and uh it was uh it was really really cool just to, to see like people who are in that age group who can appreciate uh, some of these classic rock bands that you know they probably found out about from their parents you know yeah exactly just, yeah so that it was, was a great cool. vibe i thought you know that it was it seemed like it was just a party everyone was having fun yeah uh, I didn't, you know, normally you go to a show that's that crowded and, you know, it can get spotty here and there. But I thought it was a really good vibe for that show. I really, and you know, everyone seemed like they were having a ball. And like you said, we saw that. I wish I could get my daughter to go to some of those shows with me as we were talking about, too. But, yeah, she did. She pulled some strings, but those kids were into it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so it was definitely a good time. So, uh, and we did uh, see there was uh, some Sea Tranquility fans out there in the crowd. So that's always good to see. And this is really funny and it's such a small world. So at one point, uh, I took a pic of Eric and I sitting in the lawn and posted on the on the Sea of Tranquility uh, Facebook page, and a Sea of Tranquility viewer happened to see that and saw the person sitting behind us was a good friend of theirs. So they're like, can you tap them on the shoulder and say, we watch the channel all the time. And that's, that's like, what a small world, right? You know, amidst so like cool. plus thousand people in the audience and there you go. Right. So, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That was awesome. Uh, Kyle. Good. Good to meet yep. Kyle. So I'm sure Kyle's watching right now. So uh, good to meet you at the show and uh, we'll see uh, him at the uh, sea tranquility fall fest on October 1st, hopefully um, amidst a lot of you. So uh that is just a little over a month away. So, uh, but yeah, that's our little review of the show last night. Sticks, Ario, Speedwagon, and Loverboy at Saratoga Performing Arts Center on the, what was it, the 17th of 17th August, August, 2022. So I uh, want to thank Eric for uh, suggesting we go to the show and, uh, you know, hanging out. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn the time. Damn Please uh, click that like button so YouTube sends this review out to uh, all of YouTubeville and uh, stay tuned. What do we got? Today is uh, Thursday. We got uh, Monsters Den coming at you tonight. Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff tomorrow. UK Connection on Saturday and Sunday. You've got uh, The Curse of the Collector. That's coming up on Sunday. Hope, I hope to get you a uh, album ranking too uh, before then as well. We'll see how that goes. So uh, if not this weekend, you'll get one or two next weekend. So thanks everybody for our report. I'm Pete Pardo. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. Bye-bye.